very good morning. Welcome you all to the NPTEL course on Advanced Distribution System Analysis and Operation. Today, we are going to focus on the architecture of distribution network. Now, distribution networks are designed to deliver electricity efficiently and reliably to the consumers. And they can be categorized based on their topology or architecture, which significantly impact their operational characteristics, reliability and cost. There are three main types of distribution network architecture. It is radial, mesh, and weakly mesh. So, let me just explain in detail. Uh, as you could see the substation, uh, which has different feeders, feeder number 1, feeder number 2, feeder number 3 and feeder number 4. And they perhaps there is no close path, it is simply moving to the consumer end radially and hence this type of distribution architecture is known as radial distribution system. However, the same radial system with those bit of connectors, you could see this connection, we could see this connection, I mean as well as you could see this connection through which the network which has been converted from a radial to a mesh network. And now we can also perhaps have networks which are not properly bound or a serious mesh network which are loosely connected which can be either open or either closed and perhaps known as weakly mesh network. Now, let us focus on radial network structure. As we discussed, they are, there is no mesh here. So, they are all radial in nature. They move till the consumer end. A radial distribution network is a tree-like electrical network structure in which each customer or the load is connected to the power source substation through a single path. There is no close path. So, a single feeder line starts from the substation. It branches out into smaller lines to serve various areas. Each customer receives power through only one route. The power flow in one direction from substation to feeder to branches and end consumers and this is known as unidirectional flow of current in case of radial network structure or architecture and which is quite easy to operate as well as to analyze. Now, what are the merits and limitations due to radial network structures? The advantages are which is quite simple, cost effective, easy for fault detection and clear coordination is possible in case of radial distribution networks. However, the disadvantages are low reliability, why it is known as low reliability? Because if I move back, imagine if there is something wrong in this feeder, then these consumers are not having access to electricity. However, if there would have been a mesh network, then these consumers would have got some electricity even this feeder is not able to cater. So, this is why we call actually the limitation which is low reliable and there is no redundancy, there is no alternate path to cater electricity when one feeder is out and about the voltage drop, there is a significant voltage drop at the far end of the feeder because in case of radiality, we will experience voltage drop in each and every bus and at the end, the voltage drop will be very, very significant. Now, let us focus on a IEEE 123 node test feeder operates at a nominal voltage of 4.16 kV and 480 volt. Now, this is a single line diagram of IEEE 123 bus system, which is a radial feeder and most of the time for experimenting any algorithm, we use this network. As you could see, you know, I think uh, the substation and everywhere it is going radial, radial, radial. Perhaps you can see some of the transformers here and there, but almost the end uh, which is open, you know. All right, everywhere it is open and the same structure here. Good. Now, let us move to mesh network structure. A mesh distribution network is a type of electrical distribution system 
in which multiple paths or loops exist between sources and the loads. It is fully interconnected, allowing power to flow through multiple routes depending on the system conditions. That means the load at this point will be catered either through this path or it could be catered through this path or even it can be catered through this path or it can be catered through this path. So, you will have many multiple paths or multiple routes for a load bus to be catered power from the substation and that is known as mesh network structure or architecture. So, what it is structure basically all nodes are connected with redundant lines forms closed loops that are actively operated. No single point of failure multiple feeders can serve the same load. So, the reliability redundancy is extremely good and bidirectional and dynamic uh, power flow is possible. The power can come through for example, this point as I told you it can come through this, it can come through those. So, load flow is distributed based on network impedance, voltage level and control algorithms. Power flows can be adjusted in real time via advanced automations. Now, let us concentrate on advantages and disadvantages. In case of meshed network structure, the merits are high reliability that is power reroutes automatically in case of faults or maintenance, less chance of a complete blackout, redundancy that is multiple feeders means a backup supply is always available. Efficient load sharing, load is evenly distributed across feeders reducing stress and losses, better voltage regulation due to multiple injection points and dynamic routing. Now, what are the disadvantages, limitations, high cost, more lines, switches and protection systems are required, complex protection coordination that is bidirectional flows, complicate fault direction and fault detection and isolation, complex protection coordination that is bidirectional flows, complicate fault detection and isolation. Advanced control system required such as SCADA, ADMS and real time monitoring for effective operation. Now, we can also have a look to a IEEE 342 node system. The network is from the United Electric Light and Power Company of Newark. The mesh distribution network is connected to a transmission network by two step down transformers that is 230 13.2 kV. 8 radial primary distribution feeders of 13.2 kV, low voltage distribution with a voltage of single 120 slash 208 volt grid system and 8 277 slash 480 volt spot networks. So, this is quite interesting all of you can have a look to the single line diagram of IEEE 342 bus mesh test system. I mean very very you know complicated and uh, the energy is can be catered from any corner of the city. So, it is good, but it is too complicated to manage. Now, finally, we get into weakly meshed network structure, popularly known as a ring distribution network. I am once again highlighting our IIT Roorkee Academy campus is also a ring distribution system which is weakly meshed distribution network. So, a ring distribution network also called as weakly meshed network is a partially interconnected system where feeders from loops or rings but are typically operated in an open loop mode under normal conditions. The as I could see that you know these are the switches okay the switches may be on or the switches may be off. So, sometime it makes it radial and some of the two radial lines can be also created as a mesh network. Load points are connected in a loop. The loop is normally open at one point. So, power flows like in a radial system is possible during faults or maintenance the open point can be shifted to reroute power. Now, weakly meshed uh, network structure that is normally in case of power flow which is unidirectional like a radial system become bidirectional during switching operation. So, as I told you there are two radial unidirectional can be made bidirectional through a switching operation as and when required. Power can be restored quickly by closing the open point and isolating the fault section. What are the advantages and limitations? The merits are 
higher reliability than radial systems, quick fault recovery. So, faults in one section do not cut of the entire supply, flexible operation, load transforms and reconfiguration possible without major disruptions, moderate cost more expensive than radial but cheaper than pulley mesh. What are the limitations? The protection coordination needed more complex than radial system due to alternate paths. No fully redundant unlike mesh system not all nodes have multiple active supply paths, slightly higher cost than the radial system due to additional switching devices and infrastructure. So, to summarize there are three type of distribution system, one is going to be radial and the second one is going to be meshed and the third one is going to be weakly meshed or ring networks. Okay. As you could see the complexity rises because if you try to create uh, loops or each and every load can be catered by any path is possible through your mesh networks. But in case of weakly meshed, especially the important load points are created to be a mess through a switching point and hence part of the network is mess and part of the network is radial to me. Now, we can see a single line diagram of 17 bus weekly mess system okay, and probably the IIT Rootkey distribution system I will show you in due course of time where you can see it is purely weekly mess network. The power base and voltage bases are 1 MBA and 11 KB respectively in this network. And there are totally 21 lines for 17 bus systems, where 5 lines dotted lines constitute weakly meshed connections. Okay. So, they are sometimes connected through weakly meshed. All right. Now, let us compare with the structure, power flow, and reliability for radial, weakly meshed, and meshed. For the structure, it is uh, tree like single path for radial loop based with a normally open tie partially interconnection for weakly meshed and fully integrated multiple paths for meshed one. Power flow in unidirectional in case of radial primarily unidirectional can switch to bidirectional in case of weakly mesh and it is purely bidirectional and dynamic in case of meshed one. Reliability is very low in case of radial, moderate to high in case of weakly meshed and very, very high in case of mesh networks. Now, whatever the cost which is very, very cheap in case of radial, moderate in case of weakly meshed and high in case of mesh networks. Complexity is quite low in case of radial because it is simple, moderate or average complexity in case of weakly mesh networks and highly complex in case of mesh networks. Protection and control is quite simple in case of radial requires careful coordination during switching for weekly mesh networks and complex advanced system required in case of mesh networks. And typical applications radial networks are used for rural and suburban areas, weekly mesh networks are used uh, in urban semi urban campuses industrial complexes and the mesh network which is dense urban industrial smart grids. Now, we will slowly move to distributed energy resources as I told you. There are different uh, DRs which are normally connected to my distribution system. Distributed energy resources that is DR refer to electric power generation resources that are directly connected to medium voltage or low voltage distribution system rather than to the bulk power transmission system. DR includes both generation units such as photovoltaic, small wind, fuel cells, micro turbines etcetera and energy storage technologies like batteries, flywheels, superconducting magnetic energy storage to mention but a few. So, to conclude I mean there are many distributed energy resources which are available to us to be integrated and how do we carry out analysis with the presence of distributed energy resources become a challenge. Now, as a summary we like to classify I mean different uh, distributed energy resources. So, first one is going to be first category is electrical energy storage system and the other category is distributed generation system. And once again they are divided into renewable energy and conventional energy. And renewable energy could be PV, solar, wind, geothermal, biomass and small hydro. 
whereas in conventional type it is reciprocating engine gas turbines and reciprocating engine are of two type diesel and gas and gas turbines are micro turbine or combustion turbine. So, this is what the whole story about classification of DERs. Further depending upon the kind of actually energy resources if you talk about DERs which are either distributed generations or they could be of electrical energy storage type. The electrical storage type is either stationary or actually movable and stationary means they are mechanical type, electrochemical type, thermal type, electric and magnetic type and chemical and type of actually stationary energy storage systems. However, in case of movable electric we have battery electric vehicles, hybrid electric vehicles and plug electric vehicles. So, this is how the battery energy system or the distributed energy resources are being classified. So, with this we are coming to an end of today's talk. So, what we have covered mainly we covered about distribution type architectures. There are three types radial, mesh and ring type that is weakly mesh type. We have also discussed the merits and limitation of each type of distribution networks and at the end how the type of actually distributed energy resources related to sources, generation type and the storages are being classified. Thank you very much. Bye bye for today.